The Suez Canal, storm center of controversy for weeks, now becomes a cause of war in a lightning sequence of diplomatic and military moves. Since its seizure and nationalization by President Nasser of Egypt, the vital waterway has precipitated a new crisis in the already tense Middle East. Crack French units are embarked at Marseille, bound for a joint staging area with Great Britain on Cyprus. Less than an hour's flight from Egyptian ports, where they are prepared for seizure of the canal by force. Simultaneously, Britain reinforces its garrison on the island for the same eventuality. A naval concentration in the eastern Mediterranean strengthens the military buildup, even as Israel, in a lightning attack, thrusts deep into Egypt to the vicinity of the canal. France and Britain issue a 12-hour ultimatum that all fighting must cease. Within hours of its exploration, Britain's warplanes are winging their way to Egypt and its bombers attack five key cities, including Cairo. Following a Security Council veto by Britain and France of a United States motion for a ceasefire, President Eisenhower, after consultation with Secretary of State Dulles, makes a firm declaration of United States policy. The United States was not consulted in any way about any phase of these actions, nor were we informed of them in advance. In the circumstances I have described, there will be no United States involvement in these present hostilities. I therefore have no plan to call the Congress in special session. Of course, we shall continue to keep in contact with congressional leaders of both parties. It is our hope and intent this matter will be brought before the United Nations General Assembly. There, with no veto operating, the opinion of the world can be brought to bear in our quest for a just end to this tormenting problem. In the past, the United Nations has proved able to find a way to end bloodshed. We believe it can and that it will do so again. The whole question is brought before an emergency session of the General Assembly, where it faces the bar of world opinion. At the end of a six-day fight that astonished the world and shook the Kremlin to its foundations, Hungary was free, free to fraternize on its own borders and Russian supplies to the stricken city of Budapest along roads littered with burnt-out red tanks disabled by almost unarmed men fired by passion for liberty. Flaring swiftly from student demonstrations into open revolution, the pent-up hatreds of oppression sent Russian might reeling and forced withdrawal of the red yoke. But even as these scenes were recorded, rumors flared of the re-entry of Russian forces and new fighting. The beautiful city of Budapest, scarred by conflict, again faces a Russian onslaught even before the debris of the fight for freedom is cleared from the streets. In startling developments, Hungary broke with the satellite Warsaw Pact military alliance, announced neutrality, and pleaded for priority on the United Nations agenda. Then word came that Russian forces were massing, and all communication with the West was cut off. Hungary's newfound freedom is menaced before the martyrs of revolution go to their rest. Streets of Rome are thronged with demonstrators cheering Hungary's fight against red domination. Students began the demonstration in the early morning, 500 of them. By midday, over 10,000 had joined the anti-communist protest. In nearly every major Italian city, similar demonstrations were staged. But in Rome, things got a little out of hand. When the crowd marched on Communist Party headquarters, police moved in to keep order. In a matter of minutes, the political demonstration dissolved into a non-political riot. It started with scuffles that quickly turned into slugfests. Through the heart of the city, the battle between students and police raged. No new thing in Italy, but perhaps by its very intensity, a measure of Rome's anti-communist fervor. From horses to horsepower, that's quite a switch for the Texas Ranger who, with his trusty steed and shooting iron, long has kept law and order in the Lone Star State. But modern technology is catching up with the Old West, so now it's horses under the hood. And even old paint must admire his sleek new replacements. The cars are needed to pack the modern Ranger's arsenal of weapons. But horse is also part of the arsenal. Gets a free ride to where the highway ends and the Lone Prairie begins. There's still a job for old paint with the Rangers. 
Horses take over where horsepower ends, for the Old West lives on. A thrill-packed opening for the 68th National Horse Show at Madison Square Garden. Track riders of five nations competing on a grueling 10-jump course for the Goodwill Challenge Trophy. Perfect rides send four out of 15 into the jump off. One from Mexico and ERA, two from Chile's team. Canada and the United States both eliminated. A test of horse and horseman with courage, speed and skill at a premium. The winner, Mexico's General Humberto Mariles. Adding to the opening night pageantry and color, a longtime horse show favorite returns. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police musical ride. 32 Mounties on matched brown steeds in a brilliant display of precision riding. For lovers of spectacle and fine horse flesh, the event of the year. Hi. This is one of my favorite hobbies, astronomy. And this is my backyard observatory. Do you have a hobby? Well, if you do, you know it costs a lot of money and you've got to save for it. And I can't think of a better way of saving than with United States savings bonds. Your money returns $4 for every three when the bonds mature. Janet and I have made it a regular family habit. In fact, we've started our young daughter, Kelly Lee, with a $100 bond. That's how it is with most families. The kids start by buying saving stamps at schools. The older ones with jobs invest a little each month. Mothers and fathers can buy them regularly, either at the bank or through the payroll savings plan. Does your family have the bond buying habit? I hope so. Remember, you get back $4 for every three when the bonds mature. So why don't you all go out and buy a big stack, huh? <laughs> 